Hello, BlueTube. This is Blue Hair Dave, and this video is a game changer. It's practical concepts to improve your focus, motivation, productivity, happiness, and lessen your anxiety. I, I mean that. And I use these techniques. Uh, this is called my bullseye method, and it really changed my life. Uh, I wasn't always a top-level marketer. In fact, I was uh, meeting failure after failure for a pretty long time in my adult life. Um, but this really recentered me, and my life did a complete 180. Um, so sit back, take some notes, and give this a try. It's not too long, but it's also not short because it's going to get to the point, and I have a bunch of uh, techniques and things to help increase your motivation and productivity. It's a list. So please comment, share, and subscribe if you found this to be useful. I spent a good amount of time on it because I felt like I had to get this out to the world and share some of these techniques that really helped me when I realized it. It was like a boom, a light went on. And the second I started to use these techniques, everything changed in my life. And I hope it has the same effect for you. Enjoy. What's up, everybody? So I'm going to go jump right into this, and I'm going to show you something that changes the way that I do business and the way I operate daily, and it made a really big difference in my life, and I think I want to share it with you so that it makes a really big difference with you. I'm going to show you how to be more relaxed, happy, and productive without losing focus. Some people feel like they need to keep an edge in order to stay uh, productive. And if you found yourself uh, particularly lately where you're just losing focus, a high level of worry and anxiety, this is exactly what you need right now. Maybe you're not used to working from home or your work situation is different. Your family life is different. The world seems to be on fire to you. This is for you right now. And I'm going to keep it as short as possible, but in the next few minutes, I am going to show you something that if you implement it, it will change your life, and it's something that almost everybody I know can benefit from. So let's go ahead and get started. So do you find yourself with a loss of focus? Maybe it's uh, you've got anger. You're, the time just kind of goes by. It was You started working and it was 9 o'clock. The next thing you know, it's 2 o'clock and you have no idea. You didn't finish what you were supposed to do. You're not getting the things done you want. You're not reaching your goals. You're not achieving. You feel like you've lost your ability to sustain things. You don't feel like going to the gym. You've got some sadness. You're angry. You've got lack of motivation trouble sleeping, you're worried about your finances, and you're just worried about life in general. Now, if this sounds like you, it sounds like me a lot of the time, um, and so this is something that's going to help you for that. And also, let me just, before I go on, I just want to explain that I'm not some, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not some dude that's got it all figured out, I'm not... Uh, David Goggins or Jocko Willink. I'm not, you know, I'm not a former Navy SEAL who's got all his shit together and and, and his ducks in a row. I'm I'm a, I'm a, a rather undisciplined person at many times, but I'm striving to be a better. And these are the things that a normal guy that kind of colors outside the lines a lot of the time and has trouble staying focused has been using to actually. Uh, to not just maintain, but to excel. There are certain things I excel at. And I've been able to, my whole, my life has been a 180 from when I started to implement some of these techniques because I was kind of just a screw up a lot of my uh, young adult life. And I was able to turn it around and turn it into uh, a very profitable business uh, and be an entrepreneur and be able to teach people things in my line of work. And so for me to make that 180, I think uh, it, it qualifies me on how to help an everyday person make some changes that can really help them out. So I'm not a doctor or anything like that. These are just changes I've used for myself that I want to share with you. Okay. So a lot of things we just talked about, lo lo lack, loss of focus, loss of time, anger, sadness, things. Okay. These are all a lot of the time caused by a, a level of anxiety. Now, everybody has a level of anxiety that they deal with. It could be a general low-level anxiety or high anxiety. I suffer from a generalized anxiety disorder and a panic attack disorder. Um, believe it or not, some of you might know me since I, uh, sit for, since we were kids. Uh, but I, I've suffered with this for most of my life. And, uh, and it affects me at different times. And you don't know when it's going to affect you, which is the scary part about it. And if you have any level of anxiety or panic disorder, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it can really mess up your life. And there's certain things you can do to take control of it, but we're talking about just anybody who's got anxiety, any level of anxiety. And lately, a lot of us have a lot of anxiety. So, and anxiety is caused by worrying about what's next 
or might be instead of what's actually in front of us and occurring. So you're worried about what's going to happen if, what if, what if, what if, and your brain goes into a crazy cycle where it can be debilitating and anxiety can lead to depression and depression can lead to anxiety. Uh, they're often very closely associated. So you're worried about what's in front of you instead of, you're worried about what's going to come instead of what's actually occurring right now. So uh, if I start to worry about eight slides ahead, then I'm going to mess up the slides I'm working on right now when I'm talking to you. So if I'm not talking about what's on, uh, what's happening right now, then I'll mess up. So that's kind of what anxiety is, but we use it in our life. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to fix this in the next few minutes uh, right now, really. And it's just a few easy steps and some of the steps you might like, some of them you won't like. They don't cost a dime. And they're going to take a little bit of discipline to go through because there's certain things that we do that fire our dopamine and our pleasure centers in our brain that we enjoy, but they hurt us just like drugs, right? So uh, it, then you'll see what I'm talking about. So I call this a, bull, a bullseye of influence. And I don't know if somebody else has this name for this, but this is what I came up with. And this is what I, the best example I could think of. Okay, and here is the bullseye of influence. There's things that you can influence, there's things that you can't influence, and there's what you spend your time on. And unfortunately, these things are usually out of whack for most of us, myself included. So I'm gonna go by and explain all these different things and how you can spend time on only the things that are going to get you somewhere instead of wasting a ton of your time. And when you do this, you're going to see all the anxieties and the worries and the fears. They're all going to dissipate. They're all going to float away. They're all going to just go. And then the second you go back to doing the destructive behaviors, which I'm going to tell you to stop doing, uh, then they're all going to come flooding back immediately. And you're going to notice the difference right away. We, I hope you do. So let me talk about the things we have here. So we have you. You meaning me, meaning you. These, this is something you have direct control over. You have control over your actions. On your, you have control over your reactions. You have control over your emotions or lack of control of your emotions. You have control of your words, the choices that you make, the mindset you have going into a situation, during a situation, and after a situation, the goals that you set or your lack of goal setting. If you don't have goals set and a plan, well, that's a problem. So a lot of, you know, just not to get off the topic, but a lot of people are like, well, I don't know how to do this. And I go, well, what happened in the steps you already took and what is your ultimate goal? What's your intention? Uh, I don't know. I'll get, and I go, well, you, well, then you need to go back to square one and say, what is it that you need? How much money do you need? If people go, like, oh, I'm not making enough money. Go, well, exactly. How much money do you need to survive? And how much money do you need to, to not worry about money? And then people are like, well, I don't know. We're like, well, what are your expenses each month? I don't know. Okay, that's a bad answer. So you need to be able to set goals, just to, not to get off topic, but that's, that's an important thing and uh, for another video. Um, you can control whatever the person in the mirror does. That's you. So you've got direct control of all these things in the you spot. Now, it's not a very big circle. Okay, it's got less space than all these other ones. And these aren't to scale, but it, it'll give you an idea of the idea. So you have control of this. Okay, then there's the circle outside of you, which you have contact with, which is your family. Okay, uh, you with your family, loved ones and relationships, things like that, your spouse, your kids, you have suggested control. You can't force somebody that you love to do something. You can hope they do something. You can tell them how you feel, um, but you can't force them to do anything. You have suggested control. So your spouse, your partner, your kids, if you've got kids, you know this for a fact, right? You can't, you're like, do this, eat this, go to bed here, go get, take your bath, whatever. Yeah, good luck, right? You can't force somebody to do. You think you can, but you can't, right? Um, your in-laws, your extended family, your friends, okay? This is, these, this is what's in the family zone. The next zone is work. Okay, this is where you only have influence over people. You also have influence, but you can also suggest things to family members. At work, you kind of can't really, you know, uh, be, they're not as close to you. So you've only got influence. You've got to figure out a way to do this dip even more diplomatically than you would with a family member even. Um, you have work partners. There are choices. You can choose where you spend money, where you don't. 
Uh, you're hired, you're fired, that kind of thing. You can stay at a job that you like, don't like, or you can leave a job that you don't like. You can find a job that you enjoy, or you can't. It's ama- The choices are usually very simple for a lot of people, but they ch- they tend to ignore the fact that they that you that you do have a choice. You, you might have been in a situation that's less of a choice, but there's ways to get to the point where you need to have more of a choice, and that's uh, for another video as well. But I'm going to go over these influences. So then you've got your local, okay? This is your local community. This you don't even have a suggestion really in your local community. It's only by osmosis. It's what everybody gives out. So a community is what people are. So that's your churches, the clubs you belong to, PTA, the school, organizations, your voting. But I say osmosis uh, because you're going to get back what you give out, and you, at least you hope to. But you're noticing that you have less and less and less control over all these things as you go out. And people kind of don't grasp that. So then there's the world on the outside. And in the world, which is everything outside of, you know, your area, your city, your county, your state, even your country. But you've got less and less control as you go further out. You can actually be on a PTA and become the president of that and make something happen. Believe me, people don't want to run. It's hard to find somebody to fill these spots usually. So you could do that and then you could change what your school does. And then you find out real quick, did you really want to be in charge of that? Did you really have a better idea than the other person? Or were you just complaining about something because you knew that it wouldn't really have an effect? And I'll get into that more. So the world, you have no influence or control over what happens in the world. Now, I know I'm going to get hate comments and go ahead and comment below, but I'm talking practically. I'm speaking practically. You have no influence or control. Many, many people getting together can have influence or control or there's huge movements, but these are very rare and that's why they end up in history books. In general, you right now watching this have no influence or control on the rest of the world or what everybody does. You have no influence on politics. You have no influence individually on an economy unless you're Bill Gates or somebody and then you decide to give all your money to a foreign country or something. You have no influence on social and cultural issues. You have no influence on the business climate. You have no influence on Facebook or social media or anything. You have zero influence. Okay. This is important. Everything else you can't directly touch. So if it's not you or maybe your family, but even there you'd have less control and you're, you're I'm talking your the people that you support. You, you don't have any control over most of these, but as you go outside from the bullseye on outward, you have less, less, less control, and you have no control over here, okay? And a lot of people pretend like they have control over here. So there's a problem with that, right? You probably got 100% of control over you. In fact, I know you have 100% control over you because it's the only thing that you are able to control is your actions. And then your family, maybe 20%. Control, if you want to call it that, or ability to influence what occurs in your family. Uh, you have less of this. If you're if you're the wage earner, you probably have 20%. If not, you probably don't even. Um, work, maybe 10% over what happens at work, unless you're the boss. Um, but even then, you know, you can't force people to do certain things. You can only just let them go and hope the next guy does what it is you wanted to do. Your local community, maybe 3%. If you donate and build a library for the local uh, uh, library or add a wing or, or uh, uh, build, help your church build houses. Okay. Now you've got some influence, but it's only like 3%. And the world, you have 0% influence. So you got to think about what you can influence what you can't influence, and what you spend your time on. Now, if you're getting angry at what I'm saying right now, and you're like, no, I do have control. I just, okay, here's the thing. You need this the most, so don't stop watching because you're the person that kind of needs to hear this the most, all right? Our brains are wired to spend time on things that we have no control over. If you're the person that spends a lot of time on Facebook, or Twitter, arguing with people that you know or don't know at all, okay? There's a psychological reason that we do this. There's a psychological reason that we enjoy it, or we don't enjoy it, but we do enjoy it, okay? Everybody knows this feeling. So we're not going to pretend like it just doesn't exist. It's why people uh, call out people online. 
It's because they want to feel bigger and better than other people. Okay. Why do we do this? It's a self-preservation mechanism. Okay. It's easier to blame things that we can't control than to blame ourselves to what's happening. Where you could be focusing on what you're doing, but instead you're spending all your time fighting with people that you have zero control over. Okay, think about that. So there's a small area that you can work and you can keep yourself busy 24-7 just on that because it's the thing that needs the most work. And But we choose to spend things on we have no control over. We're always hovering over here. When you're on Facebook arguing, you're in this zone, man. You have zero control. But we do that because it's easier to blame the man, the world, everything else than it is to blame ourselves. Now, everybody gets dealt a different deck of cards and have a much different starting places in life. But that doesn't change the fact that the only thing you do control is how you're reacting to the situation. That's the only thing you can do. Okay, You can be plopped down and be born to super rich parents that give you a $10 million loan and a real estate empire and then make it work. right? Or don't make it work. You can be born in abject poverty in a sewer in India. But you still have to make choices every day to figure out, what do I do from here? Do I just accept the fact that I'm going to live in garbage? Do I try and survive and try and make $2 a day? Do I hope to make $100 a day one day if I'm born in that situation? How do I get there? Do I just kill myself? I don't want to go any further. People bowl these things over. But you have control over what you do. So the, the, the worst option, of course, is one I just mentioned. That's a terrible option because that gives you zero control after that, right? So what you need to do is just take control of the small things. And the beauty of it is, is that you can take control of these things. And you're going to feel so much better after you do it. That's the exciting part about it, okay? So once we stop spending time on these areas... We, we have more satisfaction. This is temporary satisfaction. This is doing, this is a, this is a bottle of whiskey, okay, in your brain as far as if you're fighting on Facebook, that's the same as doing a bunch of lines of Coke and then the next day, oh my gosh, and you know, you, you get uh, doing some heroin or something. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's like a disease almost and everybody gets caught up into it except we consider it to be normal, but it, it can ruin people's lives at the same time. So, when you're blaming other people, it's because you don't want to look inwards and you're afraid to blame yourself. And I'm not saying be hard on yourself. I'm not saying be like, ah, Dave, you're so stupid, stupid, stupid. I'm stupid, stupid, stupid. No, I'm saying just look and say there's so many things in your sphere that you can control that you need to get on controlling. So with you, you've got direct control of your actions, your emotions, your words, your choices, your mindset of how you look at things, your goals. Whatever the person in the mirror does. You know, I just watched a movie the other night. And it was about, uh, I think his name was Brian Banks. And he got falsely accused of a crime. And he spent a lot of time in jail. And he was supposed to go to the NFL. And he had a mentor in the jail. And he explained to them that you have to, the only thing you can change is how you look at things and where you're going to go from here. And that's how he survived being in prison, falsely accused for all those years. It's the same thing. Now, some people's lives might be better. Some might be worse. Some people are born to privileged lives and still have a really tough time. Most people have a really tough time because everybody's got their own battle. So I'm not minimizing anybody's battles, but what I am saying is, is that no matter where you are, the only thing you have right now is a choice on how you control yourself, your actions, reactions, your emotions, your words, your choices, your mindset, the goals that you're going to set, and whatever the person that you're looking at in the mirror does. That's it. You can get support from these groups, but the only thing you're going to have control over is this little thing right here. Okay, the sim the solution is simple and it's not easy to to to, to fix this part, but you got to focus on what you do, you, you, me. That's what I have to focus on. You have to accept a hundred percent, hundred percent of the reason or blame or responsibility of everything, 
Now, it might not be your fault, but guess what? Fault doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whose fault anything is because ultimately it's your fault because it happened to you. Maybe you put yourself in a situation where things were more likely to happen. Do you have bad luck? Are you a person with good luck or bad luck? Because good luck people will tell you that they get good luck because they put themselves in situations where they can have good luck. Bad luck people will just say, I have bad luck. They don't see it as themselves, maybe themselves, making poor choices a lot of the time and then putting themselves in a situation where something bad can happen. Now, bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to everybody. But there are decisions that you can make. If you're a teenager and then there's a group of friends you know that are going to go out and commit vandalism. And then there's a group of friends that are going to be studying. You have a choice to make. Now, you go out with a group of friends that are going to do the vandalism and then another group of guys comes by and they get you get into a fist fight and one of them has a gun and shoots somebody right okay did that did you get deserved to be shot because you were creating some vandalism or spray painting you don't know really right i mean to take somebody's life for for painting no but you were in a situation where that could happen but you wouldn't have been if you were just studying with a group of people so that's just an, an, uh, an example of what could happen so this, it works when you're 80 and it works when you're 25 at a new job or you're 40 and you're trying to get your business uh, re-going after a disaster or something. Reactions, emotions, discipline, time management, words, etc. All things that you control. They're the only things that you control. So you have to accept 100% of the reason, the blame, and the responsibility for everything. If you're still mentally fighting this right now and saying, well, Dave... You're just not being sympathetic or just, I'm not trying to be unsympathetic. I'm just saying the only thing you can do is say that just happened. And now what do I do now? Things can happen. People die. Uh, relationships end. marriages end. Uh, you lose your job. You, you go bankrupt. But at this point, all you can do is to say, well, even if it was or not your fault, the fault doesn't matter. There's a pandemic. It doesn't matter whose fault it is right then and there when you're fixing the emergency. Maybe later go back and examine, a forensic exam and say, what happened? How do we stop this from happening again? But the first thing is, is though, how do I fix the problem going forward? What do I do in the next second, the next minute, the next five minutes, the next 10 minutes, the next hour, the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year? That's what you need to think about. And you'll be, there'll be plenty to do, plenty to do, Okay. So the only way to influence or control the other sectors is through the actions as you, okay? This becomes more important the further you go out in your bullseye because you have less and less control the further you go out. You have some but very little influence in your family and your work except your actions that you take and the examples you have. So with the family, your main thing is you're leading an example for the people in your family, your spouse, your children, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, your nephews, everybody in your family and friends, the only thing you can do is show your examples and your actions. But for the local and the world, the only way you make a difference is how you handle your life. Okay, and it's, it's, it's basically taking ownership of what you do. So here's an idea. So the bull, uh, like a bullseye of influence with everything. If you just want to, all the big stuff that people are going to spend a lot of time on. Politics, voting, donations, volunteering. Those are things that you can do to help change or influence things that you don't have really a lot of influence. But you don't have all that much influence. There is a way to get more influence, and it usually includes having more resources, and I'll get to that. So for the community, you can spend your time and energy and donations. Once again, donations, money, time, energy, voting, donations, volunteering, social and cultural issues. Contributing instead of you instead of using resources, you're contributing to resources, because with social and cultural issues, depending, it doesn't matter what your politics are, you care to change something for what you think is better. So how do you fix those things? You're probably going to need to contribute resources to help other people achieve levels where the things that you don't want to see happening aren't happening. The solutions are going to require resources. The economy and the business climate, you don't really have control over that, but you can make sure your business is in good shape to handle the problems that will inevitably come up because they always come up. These problems are going to occur. There's no such thing as a business that runs smoothly every day. Most businesses have a big problem that comes up every single day. The people that don't pull their hair out 
and then bang their head into the wall and quit are the people that survive. Some people can do all these things. They control themselves and you'll still fail, but you really don't fail unless you quit. If you adjust, you might even go bankrupt, but you'll make an adjustment and say, well, how do I avoid that again? Where did it go wrong? What did I do that made it go wrong or help contribute to it going wrong? Because you can't control what the other three business partners did. You can say, I shouldn't have went into business with them. See, it's still you ultimately, and then make a different change, right? And here's the big one, social media. So you have no control and you need a big wake up call. Okay. If you're on social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is, and you're arguing with people and I am totally guilty of this, but I made a big change where I like, I'll say, all right, Saturday from like two to five or two to three, (laughs) I'll let myself reply to a couple arguments, but then Sunday I don't answer any of the ones that keep coming in. So if you want to have a voice, pick an hour once a week and then go to town or whatever it is. But if you keep arguing, you are never, here's the thing to remember. You are never, ever, 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 ever going to win a fight online with anybody ever, never. I know a lot of people, myself included, like I said, I am human just like everybody else. I am in fact much more human than most people because I need to have these structures and write these things out to keep my own ass in check. Okay. That's why I know this stuff works because it keeps my undisciplined, butt still achieving at levels that, uh, that I needed to, right. You're never going to win a fight online. And you'll notice also that a lot of the people that argue the most online also might have fragile mental states. Did one come for the other? Well, there's probably a call and response for this, right? And there's a vicious circle that goes on. So you got to keep that in mind. Now, I know that if I'm arguing online, my mental state gets distraught. I enjoy it and then I hate it and I get angry. and It's like watching a sports game or a bad sports game. It's like some weird feeling, but it's never healthy. And you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't accomplish anything. So if you're on Facebook trying to change the world, guess what? You're wasting your goddamn time. You're wasting your time. You can go out and you can do something that'll change it. You can go out in the world and make a change. It might be a little bit of change, but you know what a little bit of change is? It's bigger than this that you're going to do arguing with people on Twitter and Facebook. It might make you feel good to call somebody out and to signal that you're better. But guess what? Everybody's got something they did wrong in their past. All you can do is control what you're doing now and in the next minute, the next hour, the next week, the next month. So stop on the social media. Give yourself a time if you have to. It's an addiction and you need to realize it. Now, if you're in a situation where you're a business or an entrepreneur or something and it's not going as well as you want, and you're spending any time on Facebook, you need to look at you. You need to look in the mirror right now because that's on you, okay? I remind myself of this all the time. It's eating up precious time. Now, if you're learning something, but I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about going on and posting, getting people to engage if you're trying to sell something online. What I'm talking about is fighting with people online. And by the way, if you have a business and you're using it to do business with anybody online and you're mentioning anything that's going to get in your argument with anything, I'm all for free speech and everything. But do know that you're damaging yourself because especially the United States, there's a big split culturally. And then there's the people in the middle. And so if you come off from the edges on the fringes and... There's going to be a group of people that don't want anything to do with your business and it's going to hurt you. That's a decision you need to make. But the real decision is, is is your arguing going to fix anything or help anyone? The answer is no, it will not. If you spent that time working on yourself and your business, you probably wouldn't need to be arguing on Facebook. Okay. Um, so I have this hands reach technique uh, that I think about. So if I can't touch it with my arms, 
I shouldn't worry about it. I shouldn't try and change it. I shouldn't spend time, money, or resources on it. Unless I've got everything buttoned up in my household and in my day, then I'll go out there and take care of it. Now, this might sound cold and be like, well, people need your help. Absolutely true. But guess what? I can't help other people until I've got my situation under control. Right? We don't get funding to help homeless people or to donate to help feed homeless and help rehabilitate homeless people so that they've got a place to live and get single moms that are living in their cars or their kids places to live and education and teach them job skills. You know how we do that? With time and resources and money. So you know what the number one thing I need to do is make sure that I am not living in my car or that I'm not living on somebody else's dime, that I'm trying to not use, I'm trying to use the least amount of tax dollars as I can and then do, and contribute more to the tax base so that other people can have the money. Uh, the less of a burden you are, the more you can help other people. Does that make sense? Right? So that's what I'm talking about. And I know it kind of sounds cold, but if, if you're, you can't help somebody from drowning if you're unable to swim yourself. It's as simple as that. So if you run into a problem and you can't change it, then you need to stop worrying about it until you're all fixed, until whatever's around you is fixed. Okay. Now, if you see an injustice in the world, you know how you change that? You're not gonna, you're not gonna change the way that uh, police departments and people around the world look at other people. You're not going to cure racism by arguing on Facebook about it. You're not going to change somebody's mind on Facebook about what it is, the prejudice or bias that they hold. You're not going to do it by insulting them, I can tell you that. But you know what you can do? You can make sure that you're not a prejudiced person. You're not a biased person, if that's your cause. Right? You can, if you're right about the world not being pious enough or not following your religion's teachings... And you're right about, you know, the, the, the lack of whatever it is that you see as being righteous in the world. You're not going to change somebody else. But you know what you can do? You can make sure that you're following those guidelines and rules. Whatever your personal ethos is or system, you have to follow it. Then you're an example for that. And then other people will follow you if they think that's the ethical right thing to do or something that's to be followed. That's what leadership is. You can be a leader. And then that'll bring apart real change. But leaders worry about what they can control, and then they help other people facilitate further down. And they don't do this by ordering them or arguing with them. They do this by leading by example and then helping other people achieve those goals. Okay? And so the leader has already taken care of his stuff, and then he's helping the other people take care of their stuff. And that's what I'm talking about. So the only way to affect the rings outside of you is to use your arm's reach effort to swim through these things. So the further out in the rings you are, the more time and energy and resources and money you're going to need. So you can help your immediate family because you're paying the bills, right? Or whatever it is that you're doing and helping out, pitching up, doing some chores if you're a teenager or a kid, right? And then you've got the people that you work with and then you could lead by example. You could crush it. You could be the top salesperson. You might be the boss. But the only way that you can swim through these the rest of the world, your local community, is by having more resources and time to spend on these things. The only way you have those time and resources, it's like a, it's like a oxymoron. You can't help other people until you're under control. So that's the important lesson here to remember. So trying to affect these things without first controlling you, it's a fool's errand. You're not going to be able to do it. So that's why everybody likes to argue on, on social media is because it's free. But it's not free. It's costing you dearly in time. And it's, this is the biggest example. But people will be in their cars and they get angry at the people around them driving. You flip them the bird, you know, because it feels good or whatever. But, but you can't control traffic. You can't control the way other people drive. You can only control how you react to it. Okay, I get angry in the car and people drive like idiots and I want to teach them that the left lanes for passing or driving faster. And if you're driving slow, you shouldn't be in the left lane. Most people know this. A lot of people don't seem to know this. Right. But what am I going to do? Teach them a lesson by ramming their car. Right. That's somebody who can't control their emotions. No, that's going to affect you adversely. Okay, so just worry about you. You follow those rules and then maybe everybody else will catch on. That's all you can do. Okay. So the only way to affect rings outside of you is here's an example. So you want to help those in poverty in your community, 
Like I said before, you're going to need the time and resources and money to do this. You're not going to have them unless you have focused on your own personal condition first, then your family's and your community's needs. That's how you do it. That's why the people who are community leaders generally are kind of wealthy because they're able to do that. Otherwise, you're not going to, you know, you're, you might not have the time to go and, and, uh, and help people and, and uh, donate your time. Okay. So if you want to donate time and money, you have to have your stuff under control because that's what you want to use that money. That's what's valuable to you. Uh, another one. Okay. And so there tends to be almost everything is looked through through two different perspectives because if we live in the world of social media. So it seems like people are like this. I like to believe that most people are kind of in the middle and then they've, and then we like the loudest people are on the edges. Okay. Now to the people who are kind of in the middle, we think all those people sound crazy kind of sometimes because they're always super upset about things and the world isn't facing their view. But that's part of the thing is, is you can't, change other people's views necessarily you can just change your circumstances and the way you treat other people the way your kids are taught to treat other people because guess, guess what no matter what you tell your kids they're still going to they're going to treat they're going to learn to treat people the way that you they see you doing it now they might grow up and take different opinions from different life experiences okay and that's going to happen but in general they're going to follow they're going to they're going to follow the same ethos that you have they're probably going to follow the same religion that you have by example they're going to follow into the same work ethics the same attitudes towards life some people i know um have the thing that, that i've heard people tell me that well my family is is never never going to be wealthy because it's just not in our cards because we've got bad luck and that's just the way it is and I said, well, yeah, with that attitude. So it's not that you have bad luck. It's that everybody in your family probably thinks this way. And therefore, you stay that way instead of trying to maybe be more social, socially mobile. Because it's, it's possible, okay? It's not as easy as it was in 1958. No, it's not. But it is still there in the United States. It's easier in some countries than others, and it's completely impossible in other countries. So it's something to keep in it. So... Some people, uh, there's an example, I, I get this a lot. They think the world's going to hell in a handbasket. Things are changing too fast, okay? Um, in order to help change things the way you want them to be, you're going to need time, resources, and money, so you have to worry about you. But the other problem with this is, is that if you're worried about the world changing and everything is just going crazy, and a lot of older people feel this way, because not all, but it's just something that happens as you get older because you don't understand the new lingo or whatever it is. This is universal. It happens generation after generation. But if you try to accept the fact that change is the only thing that's constant, nothing ever stays the same. Nothing ever stays the same. Every, yet one second ago is different than the second that's coming up, than the second I'm speaking right now. Change is the only thing that remains constant in the universe. It's physics. Comment below if you're uh, physics or whatever. Um, and this isn't true, but I'm pretty sure it's true that everything is always changing. So if you're always worried and upset that things are changing, then you're always going to be upset and angry. So that's something you might need to let go of. So you don't need to fight on Facebook all day long about these things. Okay. So... Making these changes and the changes being worry about you, behave in the way you want to see the world behave so that your family, your work can use you, your local community, the world can use you as an example so that you can help the world instead of needing help from the world. Use those things as your power. It's like a superpower, okay? And you're not going to have to worry about loss of focus, loss of time, anger, as much sadness, lack of motivation, trouble sleeping, uh, worried about your finances and worry in general. Because as soon as you start taking accountability, things start getting better right away. Right away. This has been my experience. And also, another thing with sleeping. If you're having trouble sleeping, do not have a cell phone or a mobile device or an iPad anywhere in your bedroom. Just leave it in another room and you're going to start sleeping better eventually. And if you can't sleep without it having it next to you, you realize that is the problem at that point, right? So 
it's kind of like I can't go to bed if I, you know, if I don't have uh, my three whiskeys. Well, that's that's called alcoholism, right? So if if it happens with a phone, it's kind of the same thing. I'll see people that are, you know, on Reddit or something, and they'd be like, "It's three a.m. and I can't sleep. I hate this insomnia." You have a fucking phone in your hand. That might be why one of the reasons that's contributing to your insomnia. Just think about it, right? We don't want to think about, oh, this could be my fault. So this is the end of the presentation on this. So the solutions are to worry about your sphere of influence that you can control. So you can help other people and help the world if you want. But just keep in mind, you have very little, near no control, very little, some more control, 100% control. And people think it's the opposite. They feel like they have no personal control and that they've got control over everybody in the world because they know what's right. The other thing, too, is, is do you think anybody's going to listen to somebody who doesn't have their own house in order? They're not going to. People don't want to listen to experts in our modern era because nobody knows what news to trust or whatever. People literally ignore people who have spent their entire lives studying one subject matter. And they, the cake, they have trouble making paying their own bills and getting someplace on time yet they know better than somebody who spent their whole life as an expert that's where our minds are all thrown across so if you're angry at me for saying something like that you need this presentation okay so you have 100 percent control of you you don't have control of the world but you can if you focus more on yourself all right so i hope this helps you comment let me know if it helped you um, but I thought this was a real important kind of presentation because I have to remind myself this all the time. In fact, today I needed to be reminded of this. So I went ahead and took part of a really big presentation that's like two and a half, three hours long and separate just the bullseye chart out of it just so I could record this video for all of you people because I needed to remind myself about this, all right? I got off target. I wasn't worried about me. I was worried about this stuff getting caught up and I said oh we we need a self-reminder we need a, we need a gut check right now Dave and that's what I'm doing all right so you're helping me I'm helping you we all need reminders and I hope this helps you as much as it helps me all the time uh, and have a great day bye